Our first uh, presenter this morning is uh, Harvey Cairns. Harvey uh, does uh, plot work for the Atlantic Grains Council here in Prince Edward Island, and Harvey will be speaking on a little bit of uh, the weather situation from 2019. Harvey, over to you. Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see so many here, and uh, the weather is good today. What I want to talk about this morning is uh, uh, I wanted to deal a bit with rainfall and then I wanted to look at heat units. And uh, so we'll... Uh, what I've done here is uh, this is uh, weather rainfall data for O'Leary. And uh, if you look at the blue one here, that's the PEI average, the long-term average. And you can see that ideally we're getting about 100 mils a month, an inch a week. What could be better? But when you look here, there's something wrong here. Uh, if you look at these three years here in O'Leary, 2016 was pretty close to normal. It was the yellow one, 100 mils in June, a little under in July, August, September, a little low, and uh, back in October, about back to the 100. But if you look at, at 17 and 18, they're getting pretty dry. Uh, there's not much in July, still only 50 in August, and September, still only about 55 to 60. What I have here is, uh, uh, this is uh, to illustrate that there can be quite a difference in amounts of rainfall in different parts of the island. Uh, this here is O'Leary in, in uh, 2018. It probably got about 30 mils of rain in August, whereas if you look at Kensington, New Glasgow, and Dover, they all got over 100. So. Just because we have lots of rain in one area doesn't mean that uh, we have rain everywhere. It can be quite changeable. I think as, as most people here know, the, the front field could get a shower and the back field get nothing. So it, rain is quite uh, unpredictable. Now, we're looking at 2019, just the past growing season. And if we, we look at, at, uh, at May, well, we don't need much moisture in May anyway. It looks pretty good. June, we had probably more than we needed. July is uh, getting low again, as, as it usually is. But August looks pretty good. But if you look at that on a weekly basis or bi-weekly basis, things change quite a bit. What you see there is... Uh, from the 30th of June until the 15th of August, there was very little rain. New Glasgow, not too far from here, over those 42 or 43 days, got 41 millimeters of rain. That's not much more than a good do. If you go up to Kensington, they got 53 mils of rain. Uh, if you go down to Dover, they got about 100. And that's under over a 43-day period. So there is challenges with rainfall. And uh, looking at the monthly uh, stats for rain doesn't mean all that much. Uh, as you can see there, the six weeks of, of really dry weather. So that's the rainfall uh, heat units. This is particularly important for soybeans and corn. Barley doesn't matter that much. So what have we got going here? These are the, the total heat units for Summerside. And uh, in 20, 2019, it was 2,769, 2,918. 2017 was the big year. We had. 3284. This may be a little deceiving. This is taken from the, the 1st of April till the end of October, so it, uh, don't, don't get too excited about uh, 
your heat units for your soybeans. It, uh, but this is just to illustrate what's going on here. In 2019, PEI had 192 less heat units than in 2017. 2017 was pretty much on normal. But in 2019, it was even worse. We had 513 less heat units than we did in 2017. And 2017 is pretty much normal. Uh, I'll show you some illustrations later on. This is the, uh, the curve for 2019. And the yellow curve is the heat units that PEI or Summerside received. The green line is the, the normal seven year average. So you can see there, the whole season was lower in heat units. This is 2017. And you can see here that actually in the spring it was, it was above normal for heat units. So uh, this is what we would normally expect, but the last two years we've been having considerably less heat units. So we may have a climate crisis, but this is not illustrating global warming by any means. This is uh, the day-to-day -day heat units. And uh, I was kind of interested in this little week here, uh, about the, the middle of June, we had above average heat compared to the rest of the year here. And uh, one of the things I thought of interesting, I looked at the, uh, all the soybeans that we had in 2019, and I looked at the yield. And uh, the highest yield in soybeans in 2019 was 1.3 tons per acre at 15% moisture. So I scrolled over to the planting date, and the planting date on that crop was May the 15th. On the same farm, we also had a soybean seeding rate. This, the, the one that had the 1.3 tons per acre was a soybean fungicide trial. We also had a soybean seeding rate on the same farm, and I looked at the yield on it, and it was 0.8 tons per acre at 15% moisture. So I scrolled over the planting date on it, and it was June 15th. It was the last field the, the grower sold. He didn't want to change his seeding rate till he got to the end. So there may be something there. Earlier planting may, may be a benefit. It's, uh, it's just a, an illustration. This here is the, the day-to-day -day heat units for 2017, which was our, our crop, our year with all the heat units, or the, uh, at least the average heat units. And you can see here in, in uh, early May here, there was some, some periods that had a, a quite a bit of heat. But then again, there was an a area where you, you had cool weather again. So this is a, a little bit on, on heat units. And uh, there's not all that much you can say about heat, uh, weather. Uh, there's, nobody can control the weather. It is what it is. But uh, one of the things that I was trying to make some, some sense of what I was seeing here, and uh, uh, if there was anything anything take home from it, and uh, one of the things, as I talked there before, maybe early planting, when the warm weather comes and your crop is up, you can take advantage of the heat. The as far as rainfall or lack of it, maybe. Uh, no-till is, a, if it's an option. I mean, if you're in a potato rotation, there's, it's not an option. But in 2019, we were looking at corn in no-till. Uh, part of the field was till, and then we went right into sod after forage. And we were hoping to do comparable yields on the till and the no-till. But uh, the way the corn crop was this fall, it really didn't matter. But we have done some comparison on till and no-till side by side in a field in wheat. And uh, usually the, the yield is slightly lower, but you, uh, you have to take into consideration your cost of tillage and all that sort of thing. So it, uh, the, 
as I understand it, you can get away with about 30% less uh, moisture in no-till compared to a till situation. Is there any comments or questions on weather? I, I don't know for sure, but I think the philosophy behind it or the thought behind it is the uh, if you till up the ground, you lose the moisture that's there, whereas if it's undisturbed, it, it tends to stay longer. The reason I asked that was that because as the, the, the season wears on, the tilled ground starts packing and become firmer, more like the no-tilled. Yeah. So I'm just wondering whether the rainfall is important in August, September, as opposed to where the whole impact or difference is really in, in May and June and in early July. I, I really don't know the, the answer to that question. Uh, I just put that in. As I think in most dry areas, they do try to do no till. And uh, I, I think it's, or I know it's, it's basically to preserve moisture. It's not just the cost is down, that is a big factor. But what you do start seeing, your yield reduction might be true year one. That might be true year one, and it's not always the case, but by year three and four and on, your yields are increasing, and as you get seasons where an overabundance of water in the spring and the fall and an underabundance in the summer, as you start going down that path, it's a, it's a journey. Yes. And I, so it's no-till with cover crops in between. And we've talked to lots of people that we're working with in this room, and we're not know-it-alls, that's for sure, but we've sure learned from people who have been further down this path than us. But what you're gonna start to see is your water infiltration and your water holding capability of that soil. So every raindrop that falls on that acre is infiltrating in that acre. And because you're reducing or eliminating, at very least reducing, because every pass with tillage is breaking down organic matter and turning it into CO2 into the atmosphere, fact. But if you can do it the other way around, sequester through live plants, CO2 through live plants with the carbon that's in the soil, the, the nitrogen from the air with the carbon in the soil starts to build organic matter and that's your water it's your food for the microorganisms, and there's your water holding capability. Um, and you'll find, and we're seen in many, many, many fields, just in the four years, this will be five years we've been here. We're not know-it-alls, but we did this in Ontario. Yep. It's not new, and we've seen it happen again here. We're in our fields and finished planting in many places, and there's guys that can't get in their fields because the very thing yep. that, that they're doing is what's hurting them. No, we, we, we've actually dropped into some of your fields out here we, that were into sod sort of thing, corn fields, you know. And uh, I guess the, the only thing that I would suggest there is if you're thinking of no-till, make sure your, your pH is well up before you uh, uh, decide to try it because it's, lime works much faster if you can incorporate it. Any, any other questions for, for Harvey? Uh, what's the base temperature on your calculation for heat units? Is it five degrees? Yes, that's okay. right. I did see that. I was going to say I don't know, but uh, it, it's on a, a website. That's what, yeah. actually, I, I got it from Misty. Okay, uh, so that, I would just be careful with that base calculation because, like, I tend to calculate it with zero, and, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot happening between zero degrees and five degrees, yeah. so... You know, when you use zero as a base temperature, you end up with around 2,300 heat units. Uh, I, I was using that as a comparison, really, that rather than uh, the actual, because I, I really didn't know what I was talking about, yeah. but uh, the, the computer could generate some nice stuff there. Well, it's just there's a huge difference between a 2,300 heat unit soybean and a 27. Well, I, heat yes, I, I didn't <laughs> believe those uh, 30,000 here, you know. Uh, thank you very much, Harvey. I'll get you to uh, trade the mic with